Our guest instructor today is Sidi. Sidi teaches at Yoga Soup and she also teaches at the Santa Barbara Yoga Center. Hi Sidi, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure and mm -hmm. an honor to have you here. How long have you been practicing yoga? I actually practice now for the last 12 years. 12 years? Mm -hmm. And how long have you been teaching yoga? 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I took my first um, Kundalini yoga class and three weeks later I was in a teacher training. Oh, mm -hmm. so that was really fast. Yeah, you, it was really, I knew that this was what I came to do. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Well, I went, I was injured and I was treated for a long time and one time in this room where I was treated a woman came by and she went into the room next door and I heard her chanting. And I said, what are they doing in there? And when she came out, she said, well, why don't you try it and come? And I went the next day into her class and that was it. The moment I practiced the Kundalini Yoga, I knew this is what I'm supposed to do. So I took the teacher training three weeks later and that's here I am, <laughs> 12 <laughs> years wonderful. later. Yeah. And what do you consider to be the, um, the benefits of yoga? Benefits associated For me personally, it's really that I feel by combining all, most of the limbs of yoga that I really align my spiritual body, my mental, my emotional, and my physical body. And I find stillness within. What do you consider to be the biggest risks associated with yoga? Right now, at this time, uh, my, my concern is that we are moving away from yoga and misunderstand yoga. That we really see yoga as something where we just focus on the body, but not so much on the soul and on the spirit. And that it, it's more a sportive activity than a spiritual activity. And do you think there is a way to get from one to the other? So if, if someone, if our audience, uh, for example, just practices asana, then is there a way to move from there? into a, a more full yoga that, that um, is aware of all of the limbs instead of mm. just the single limb of asana? I think the body is a wonderful entrance and then it depends often on the teacher. Hmm? Is the teacher willing to go into the unknown of meditation and mantras and mudras and really explore and guide people to a different, onto a different path? Mm -hmm. I think the distinction is, uh, if, do we have a lot of instructors or do we have teachers? Mm -hmm. And I think a teacher's um, purpose is really to uplift the spirit, not just only the body. Mm -hmm. And why do you teach? I teach to do exactly that. <laughs> you know? I see that there is a lot of need out there, a lot of hunger, and a hunger, hunger for the, to really get in touch with one's own soul and destiny and that people want to really be in touch with their own potential. And I think all the limbs of yoga are really wonderful tools to support a human being in their evolutionary journey. Mm. What is it you bring to your students in your class? I think what I bring to my students is upliftment, empowerment, um, grace, dignity, and that they learn to trust themselves and honor themselves. Thank you. Besides yoga, what are your favorite activities? I'm a grandmother. <laughs> I'm a mother. And um, I love to hike. I love to walk. Oh, yeah. I need to be on, in the air, you know. That's my favorite thing. I'm not really into competitive sports. Or, that's maybe my age. I don't know. But I don't do this. I just walk. We have some wonderful hiking trails mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So you must yeah. uh, utilize the trails yes, locally. Yes, I do. Mm. Yeah. I love that here. Yeah, yeah. I do too. I'm, I'm on yeah. the trail almost every day. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, in your hiking and uh, dealing with your grandchildren, um, do you see any benefits of yoga on those activities? I would say that my grandson is one of my students. Mm -hmm. You know, he started in the womb, because I also teach prenatal yoga. 
Um, and I could see him growing up. You know, he came to my classes from the beginning. And he re knows all the chants, he knows everything. Right now he's in the age where he has nothing to do with yoga, but that's typical with 11, 12. Yeah, but I know he will come around again. We planted the seed, and I see that his character and his self-esteem is so strong. And I really relate that to that his breathing is really calm and centered, and that his mother practiced yoga while she was pregnant and that he has been in a lot of my classes. Mm. So it's beautiful to see these young souls, you know, and then we give them the freedom to go for a while on their own, and I know they come back. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and what is he doing now? Well, he's into surfing, he's oh, into wonderful. dancing, he's into singing, you know, everything. Very expressive. Yeah, yeah. great. And yeah. so you probably see some of the benefits of his yoga practice yeah. in the other activities yeah. that he performs yeah. as well. Yeah. It's mostly really the self-esteem, the trust into himself and um, the faith that this young soul has. And I think that's very valuable. Who have been your favorite teachers? I had a lot of teachers. Uh, I was blessed. Uh, over 35 years ago, I met with Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, also called Osho. So he introduced me to meditation. That was my biggest gift that I was been given, really. Um, I follow Sadhguru Jagaji. Um, I learned from Gurmuk Kawakalsa. I learned from Joseph Michael Levery. I learned from Anand. I always look for teachers because I think that I, as a teacher, have a responsibility to continue learning. You know, I have to be fed so that I can share. And you mentioned meditation, mm -hmm. and I understand you have a background in meditation mm -hmm. that goes beyond your yoga practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah. Well, you know what, we started it's like 30 years, 35 years ago. We started with the wired meditations, the dynamic meditations, the kundalini meditations, the nataraj, the vipassana. Um, <clears throat> So, and that was, is to this day, the anchor of my own spiritual practice. I will not start a day without my meditations. What do you think about the virtual explosion of yoga in the popular culture, both in classes and online? I personally think that, you know, it's a good movement. Because I think we need to raise consciousness, we need to create more awareness. So I think it's a good movement. Is it the best way? I don't know. But I think it's something where I think maybe yoga is really the way to create a quantum leap in consciousness. And what is it that excites you about yoga? Me personally or yes. my students when I see my students? Uh, well, we can maybe do a little of each. Uh -huh. so, but let's start with you personally. Well, when I started, I thought I was very flexible and very strong, and I was in a full illusion. You know, when mm -hmm. I came to my first class, I thought I looked at the people, and in Kundalini Yoga, we have all these wild postures, and I thought, well, this is like nothing. Uh, two minutes later, I didn't feel like that. <laughs> you know, I thought, oh my God. So I went personally through a big transformation. I became very strong, I'm very healthy. And I'm excited about that, you know, because I think the more we grow up, the more we have to move to stay flexible, you know, to have the golden age, you know, in a healthy way, because we don't want to have the golden age, you know, in a walker, with a walker or a wheelchair. Huh? Sure. So we need to move more. So and I experience that yoga, the physical yoga, as well as the mental yoga, really helps me to stay present and healthy. That excites me to experience mm. that. Mm. Do you think that's the result of all of the different parts of yoga, or specifically breathing or meditation? What are your thoughts on that? Well, how do you want to do yoga without breathing? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's very sad to see that a lot of students, uh, although they come, they don't know how to breathe right. So I think all the facets are necessary. At least for me. It might be different for you, but for me, I need it all. You know? So you've been practicing yoga for a dozen years mm -hmm. now. What, what changes have you seen um, in the community and in yourself over that time? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of different yogas. 
Huh? So it seems like there's always a new yoga popping up, which I, you know, embrace. Because, I, like I said, I think every person has a different ex- entrance point, you know. So and I think it's right now there's a yoga for everyone. Huh? That's mm. beautiful. Um, but I also feel in the last years it's a lot of competition coming in, which I'm very sad about. Mm. Because that's not what yoga is about. And it becomes a lot of business. But sometimes my concern is it's about quantity and not quality. So and I wish we would turn a little bit around again, huh? where we don't focus on having packed teacher trainings, but having small teacher trainings and really focus on the individual. So I think that's, but that's my personal conflict. Maybe other people see that differently. But I personally like that we not race so fast and really watch out what we are doing as teachers, you know? So I wish, I wish we would come back to the roots, to yoga. Well, Siddhi, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's really been a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you. And if a student out there wants to keep up with your activities, find out where you are and what you're doing, do you have um, a web presence or something that they can look to to mm-hmm. find out what you're doing? I do have a website, okay. huh? and it's siddhisyoga.com. And that's S I D D H I S Yoga. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Ray. Really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Thank you.